Good morning, welcome to Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. Exciting show today because my good friend, my colleague, Dr. Jeremy Webster, is back in the studio. And he said, George, I have a topic for you that many people may believe they're already aware of, but if we take it from a different angle, I'll bet no one's aware of it and the importance of it and how to make the changes in their life and why they should make the changes in their life. The tease during the week, if you're not in the listening area or didn't listen to us online, was eating healthy doesn't mean you'll be lean. Body fat is converted into usable energy for the body, but once the energy is created, it has to be burned or utilized, otherwise it turns back into fat. Did you know that? What happens to your body fat when you lose it on a scale? Does, does, does anybody think of that? It's like, well, who really cares? Isn't, isn't that the point, Dr. Webster? It's like, it's, it's like when people do my 21-day cleanse, it's actually to cleanse your body, not to lose body fat. But since people lose a lot of body fat, they use it for that purpose. So why okay. should they even care about this comment? Well... And you don't, have to, show, you don't have yeah, to give I'm us not, the story gonna, on it, but you understand story, my the point. The whole show is going to be all about the synergy between multiple different aspects of, of what we talk about all the time. You know, we've done lots of shows on the best way to exercise or yeah. the best way to, to eat or the best nutrient supplements to use for fat loss. But it's the synergy that's really important. And I'm going to get that across today, hopefully, so that people understand that you can't just pick and choose and say, well, I'm just going to take these nutrients and expect to get results. Or I'm just going to exercise, but I'm still going to eat burgers and fries. I've seen that a lot. With, there's, there's a lot of people, uh, even friends of mine, who will go on this incredible exercise regime where it's intense and they're working out a lot. They're not getting the results they want. And they wonder why. And it's because they're not eating well. And all of a sudden there's this shift. They start eating impeccably well but they're not exercising at all maybe twice a week it's like they hit a wall with exercise they need to replace that addiction with another addiction instead of the synergistic effects of all of it right right and they still don't get the results they want they get some but not everything that they're that they're looking for um, and, I, and not only do we have to look at this as a global approach but how do we make it where where it's different and not boring to people? And I'm sure you'll do that coming up next. Where we say, okay, you have to eat well, you have to exercise, uh, there's and, and and take certain high density nutrients to support everything that you're doing. Uh, and, and is the show over then, or or do we really have something compelling to share with people? No, we, we've got a lot. In fact, I've got a question that I want the audience to think about during this first break. What happens, like you said, if you, if you do your cleanse or you do another program that, that actually works and you lose body fat? Let's say you, you have your, you've got 10 pounds of body fat to lose and in 30 days or 45 days you lose 10 pounds of pure body fat. The question is, where does that fat go? And isn't someone going to say, who cares as long as I fit in my skinny jeans and look good? <laughs> well, maybe, but if you want to understand this, I, I find that when you understand yeah. what you're doing and why you're doing something, it makes it a lot easier for you to commit to that. And also to make a, a choice. It's the same thing with food. If you're not aware of food being good for you or bad for you, then you're not really going to know why you should make the choice. Right. Um, for people listening right now, please go to f my Facebook page. Just put in George DiGiani, D-I-G-I-A-N-N-I, -N -N -I, and you'll see a link I put on there that someone sent me. It's only going to be uh, able to be viewed until Sunday uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. I've not looked at it yet. But it's all about GMOs and the dangers of them and, and what was found uh, about these genetically modified foods and how they're affecting us and basically follow the money. Of course, the FDA doesn't care about you, but it's something that will give you an informed choice about what you're putting in your body and why maybe genetically modified foods aren't healthy for you. So look at that on my Facebook page. Uh, we'll talk more with Dr. Webster coming up next. What happens to the fat once you lose it? Where does it go? Do you care? Why should you care? 7 to 05, Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. 10 The Ticket, George B. Gioni, Train Station Fitness Show. Eating healthy does not mean that you'll be lean, and often people tend to think they, that they will be lean. If you've done the yo-yo diet for years, trying the next, the next diet, the next fad, and then falling off again, going back to your old ways, you tend to adversely affect your metabolism. This will, in time, be hard to fix. Not that, it can, not that it's impossible, but it'll be hard to fix. Um, 
Body fat, and going off on that tangent for a moment, now we move forward. Body fat we know is converted into usable energy. But once you've converted it into usable energy, it has to be bur burned or utilized somehow. Otherwise, it's converted back into fat. So there are people who believe that, like we said in the first part of the segment, if you didn't hear it, Dr. Webster is here on the show, um, if you exercise that body fat will just go away, or if you eat well, body fat will just go away. And that's not necessarily the truth. Dr. Webster just walked in from taking a crap, I guess. We've been gone forever. Um, but let's, let's talk about why, what the misconception is here about what happens to this usable energy if we don't use it, and why it turns back into body fat. Well, I, I'd like to start by going back to the question we posed before the, okay. before the break. Where does that fat go? I'm going to tell you. If, <laughs> do you have some some answers in your mind that you're thinking? Where the fat goes? Where, no, where go does ahead. The, where does the fat go? Go ahead. Okay, I ask my every one of my patients this because I want them to understand what we're trying to do. I, and by and, the way, I do have an idea. I just don't want to sound like an idiot, and I want to I want to know if it's in line with what I learned when I got my detoxification certification with Kurt Hamilton okay. a while back. But go ahead. Well, the most common answer I get, which is, which is wrong, I get this about, I would say, 90 to 95% of the time, is they think, my patients think that when you lose body fat, you just, the, the fat dissolves off your, off your skin, yeah. or wherever it's being held in the body, right. and then you poop it out. Okay. They think it's just, it just leaves your body like that as fat. And that couldn't be more wrong. Okay. So, I'd like to know what your... Thought is. My thought was elimination, just like I said, what I learned through cleansing years ago, but it wasn't really about body fat as much as it was an indirect approach to it being uh, through urine, fecal matter, and sweat, just the whole elimination process. You're, you're talking about the elimination of toxins, though, not the fat itself. Right, but I thought, I thought, I guess I thought, and I've never used this information, so it doesn't really matter because I've never discussed it, nor did I think I needed to right. learn about this part of the, the information. But I assumed that that is how we got rid of it. Or is it just literally burned up and used for energy, if not gone? That's my real per thought. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. right. And that's completely different than, than the other right. approach, the Th thinking that you just eliminate it yeah. out of your body. But the, if, the I, if I'm using common sense, it has to be used for energy, so therefore it's going to be just completely burned up. There you go. That's right. e and that's exactly 100% right. Here's the analogy for people to understand this. When you have an electrical appliance in your house, say, say a blender, it runs on an energy source, which is electricity. Well, if you think about it, the electricity comes from coal, right? Mm -hmm. So, in, in effect, you're burning coal. Coal is the energy source. And that coal is just like fat in your body. It's, a, it's an energy source. But you can't do anything with fat. That, this is the key. You can't do anything with fat, but you can with energy, like your muscles. To move your body, your muscles have to have energy. Mm -hmm. Fat might be the source, but it's not the energy. People itself. look at ATP, though. ATP is the is the energy. So that's the important part here. The fat has to be converted into a usable energy source for your body, which is ATP. Then the ATP can be used to move your muscles, mm -hmm. or to pump your heart, or to help your brain think and control the rest of your body, mm -hmm. or for your liver to detoxify your body. All of these organs and all these tissues in your body have to have energy, and it comes potentially comes from fat. Well, now the the thought might be. Okay, Dr. Webster, if I am exercising all of the time, even if, not, if I'm not eating perfectly, but if I'm exercising all of the time, I'm obviously creating this energy. Why is it that I'm not losing this belly fat? Well, let's, let's just blanket it, fat. Because you're not creating energy necessarily. Right. Remember, you have to, just like the, the, the electrical power plant, it has to take that coal and then go through a process to convert the coal into electricity. Your body has to go through a process of converting your body fat. Once it's liberated from your, from your fat storage, your adipose tissue, it has to go into circulation, and then it has to be converted into ATP, which is your energy source. Only then will your exercise burn that ATP and then gone, and then it's gone from your body. That's how you lose fat. So it's the conversion that we're going to talk about, and that's one of the key steps here. Again, I mentioned you have to have the diet right. You have to have nutrients Right, and, and when I say nutrients, I'm talking about the small nutrients, the vitamins and the minerals, the essential fats and the amino acids. Not the, not the protein and the carbohydrate and the fat, but the small nutrients. And then you have to have the exercise because if you break, if, if you knock out one of those, it's kind of like a three-legged stool, George. Mm -hmm. 
A three-legged stool was stable until you knock out one of the legs. Only one of the legs has to be knocked out and it completely collapses. And I can show you that if you don't have certain nutrients that, re that are required to convert fat into ATP, mm -hmm. there's no possible way, no matter how good your diet is, no matter how good your exercise is, if that middle step, which is the conversion from fat to ATP, is knocked out, nothing happens. You won't lose body fat, no matter well, how well hard you Well, then why not go segue right into that about nutrients if we don't have those nutrients. Are there particular nutrients we have or is it nutrients on, as a whole at being uh, a, a balanced um, macronutrient uh, meal? The macronutrients, if you think about it that way, that's more your protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Right. And that's going to kind of, that's, that's basically providing an energy source for your body, a potential energy source mm -hmm. for your body. Now, if you want to start there, that, that really is the first step, is basically what does your diet consist of on a macro level or, or a large scale level. Right. If you eat, uh, well... Now you're going, I know you're going to micronutrients, but we had to start there. I, I think that's the best way to start back with that because that's the first step. You can really, you, you can provide your body with two energy sources. There's only two things that your cells really can convert into energy, and that's sugar and fat. Mm -hmm. that, that's the only thing. People say, well, protein can be used as energy, and that's kind of true, but it's only because the protein gets converted into sugar. So really your cells, as far as your cells are concerned, it's either sugar or it's fat. Mm -hmm. It's not now, what it's converted to, what's the end result? Right, right. It, it's, you, it gets converted into sugar and then your, cell, your cells can use sugar right. from protein. So fat and sugar, that's, that's all your body can use. If you have both available, your, your body will always, and I mean always, mm -hmm. preferentially prefer sugar. Always. So. Which, what, let, let me just yeah. move forward for a moment because a lot of people don't recognize the importance of what you're saying. It'll always use sugar, but what it means is if it's always using sugar, you're not being a fat burner, which means that's why you're holding on the fat. Exactly right. right. If, if you're preferentially burning sugar, you won't burn the fat that's in your diet. So that's the first problem. The second problem is if there's a lot of sugar around, you're also going to release insulin. Mm -hmm. Insulin is, by definition, a fat-storing hormone. So there you got two reasons. One, you're not going to burn the fat because there's so much sugar around. You've got to get rid of the sugar. Two, you've now introduced another hormone because of all that sugar that's going to make you even more efficient at storing the fat. So now you're fat for sure if you eat a bunch of sugar. On top of it. <laughs> I love that. It sounds like sure. me, Dave. Now you're fat for sure. You need to keep that one for Webster. Now you're fat for sure. Well, you know, I had a cheeseburger the last night. Now you're fat for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because you combine fat and sugar at the same time. Right. When I say sugar, the bun is sugar, the fries are sugar. Right. So you you can't do that otherwise. Well, people, you're, you're hold on. What do you mean yourself? fries are sugar? It's 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 fried in fried you know bad oil. It's fried. It's a saturated fat and it's bad fat. How is it sugar, Webster? It's both. It is both. I know it it's both. both because then now you have potatoes. a double whammy. Yeah, the, the starch, the starch. If you put starch in your mouth, just take a piece of potato and put it in your mouth for ten minutes. You'll notice it starts to taste sweet because starch quickly breaks down into sugar. But so, hold on, I have sweet potatoes, sweet potato fries. Those aren't bad for me. It's still sugar. Yeah, but no, you, well, hold on. What you're missing is, and I know you know this, sweet potatoes are fried in canola oil or vegetable oil. So now you still have the bad fat. It doesn't matter if it's still sugar or if it's, or if it's not sugar. You've just completely ruined the sweet potato fries. If you like the taste of them, have them, but they're not better than regular potato fries. Right, and it's not going to make it... It's not going to make it any more easy to lose weight or to lose to burn body it's fat. It's like someone who has a diet potatoes. coke and justifies having the the, the fries and the cheeseburger because go. they have a, a diet coke. There you go. It didn't make the fries go away. Right. So we hopefully we've gotten we, we've gotten that clear that if you if you eat too much sugar, you're you're just simply not going to burn fat. But let's say that you eat a lower glycemic diet, mm -hmm. a diet maybe with some fibrous foods. Um, not a lot of starchy carbohydrates, not a lot of sugar, but yeah, you do consume some fat. Well, now you've got fat, now your body's going to say, well, I don't have all the sugar hanging around, so I need energy, so what am I going to use now? Well, you're going to use fat, and you're going to first use the fat from your food. That's the easiest. It's already basically in circulation. It's not stored on your body. So you're going to say, okay, I've got this fat, I just ate some avocado, and I had all, all that olive oil on my salad. That's great. A perfect energy source, by the way. So in order to get that fat to be used so that you can move your body and make your body function, that fat, again, just like the coal from the power plant, it has to be converted into the usable energy. The coal has to be converted into electricity for your appliances to run on. The fat has to be converted into energy for the body, ATP. You know, I think a lot of, use. just to interrupt for a moment, I think a lot of people would be disappointed by what you just said because the belief is, 
yeah, I've eaten this healthy meal, but now I'm going to exercise because I want to get rid of the fat in my body. And if I'm going to utilize the fat I just put in my body or the good food, why should I eat at all? Why not just go exercise, right? Well, you have to... Hold on. You have that's, to train that's, your body. That's the thought. Why, and a lot of females do this also, why should I even eat anything at all before I work out or even in the morning or, or any fat at all? I'm not going to eat any fat. If I already have fat, why not bypass that step? And I think before we go any further, it's important to explain that. So we'll do that coming up next with Dr. Webster. It's 724 Sports Radio 1310 The Ticket. Ticket. 732 Sports Radio 1310 The Ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. Go out to Classic BMW on Dallas Parkway in Plano. With the T-Box and the Orphanage today from 8 till noon, they'll be there with hundreds of proud drivers for their Cars and Coffee event. There will be something for everyone to enjoy. Classics, exotics, concepts, hot, hot rods, motorcycles, and motorsport. And it's all free. Dr. Webster in the studio with me today. We're discussing what happens to fat when you're losing fat or are you converting fat? Are you converting it into energy and then just sitting on the couch and not doing any, anything with that energy? If you do nothing with the energy, it turns back into fat. That's not what we want, so why not utilize it? And what we left you with was, there's the, the, the thought might be, after Dr. Webster explained, having a good meal, which is, could be converted into energy, let's say a good fat meal that could be converted into energy, if you, don't, if, if you then utilize that energy, you're utilizing the energy from the meal, not necessarily your body fat. And the thought from females particularly is, well, why should I even eat that meal in the first place or any meal and just go try to convert the fat I already have into energy and, you, and use that and make it go away? And that couldn't be further from the truth, but talk about why that is a disadvantage. Right, just because most of us are not at this current point. Well, you may be and I may be, but most people out there aren't efficient fat burners right now. There's so much sugar in the diet. There's so much bread. There's so much pasta. There's so much... Uh, there's so many sweets, but people are constantly in sugar burning mode. So in order to get us to be efficient at burning fat, we have to switch over to being a fat burner. And it's a lot easier for you to eat, to, for your body to burn fat that's already in circulation. And that's, that's your fat in your food. It's a little bit more difficult for, your, for you to take the fat off of your, out of your fat cells or out of your adipose tissue uh, and convert that into, into, into energy. So we want to train our bodies by, by consuming coconut oil and olive oil and avocados and walnuts. Virgin, That's, unprocessed coconut yes, oil, by yes, the way. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, by consuming those foods, they're readily available for your body to use for energy, as long as there's not the other energy source, which is sugar. Mm. So get the sugar out. Your body will say, well, I need energy. What do I have to burn? There's no sugar around. Okay, this fat's here. This, this fat that I just broke down from the coconut oil, mm -hmm. it's here. It's ready for me. Mm -hmm. So your body will then switch over and try to become a fat burner. You take that, and then, like I said before, that becomes your source, kind of like your coal. You convert it into usable energy if you have the proper nutrients, and that's important. In order to do that, that there, it goes through a process in your cells. If your muscle needs energy, it doesn't just grab energy from circulation. It doesn't grab energy from your blood. It has to make energy inside the cell. So the fat has to go into your muscle cell, and your muscle cell has to convert that fat into that usable energy. And that's where nutrients come in. If you look at the Krebs cycle and the electron transport, which is how you get fat into usable energy, it requires B vitamins, magnesium, iron, manganese, lipoic acid, cysteine, and a few other nutrients. So basically your B vitamins and your minerals. And then and not one B vitamin. It's no, not the B12 that people are stuck on. Lots of different B1, B3, B5, right. B6. B complex. B complex. And then it goes through another process that requires CoQ10. So you've got a, at least a dozen nutrients that I just rattled off. And if you, your body if, you, if, you, if you take one or two out of the substrate of those nutrients, do you then not gain the benefit of the fat loss? or You don't, you you don't, you don't, fat, you don't burn fat, you don't lose fat, you don't get the fat converted mm -hmm. into energy at all. It has to go through every single step, otherwise it gets stuck. Think It, it just goes through this loop, mm -hmm. and it needs all the B vitamins, all those minerals I mentioned, and then it eventually has to go through CoQ10, otherwise it gets stuck, and that fat doesn't get converted into energy, and you can't burn it, and it can't be lost. What so are the it, questions? It gets stored. So then, if you don't, if you don't convert it into energy, then it just gets stored back on your body. One of the questions I have then that kind of confuses me, there are so many people who are not aware of this information and actually get great results. How is that happening? Just because they're exercising and eating well doesn't mean they're getting the 
complete nutrient composition required in the Krebs cycle to make them gain that, to, to use that energy and, and lose the fat. How are they getting those, these results? You see people before and after pictures, whether it be on my cleanse or, or things that you see on infomercials or um, people who just try really hard, they're eating a clean diet. They're not using coconut oil. You know, they're, they're not using uh, all the supplements that you need. They're probably using too much of the wrong thing, but how are they getting all these results? Well, it's, it's all basically dependent on your genetics. Some people just, some people based on how they handle stress, they lose those nutrients very rapidly. Other people handle stress really well. So any nutrients that they consume in their foods, and by the way, these B vitamins, magnesium, iron, all the things I mentioned, you can get these things from food. It's yeah. just difficult to get enough for a lot of people. Right. If you're under stress or if you've taken medication or if you work really hard, you know, those type of things tend to deplete you of these nutrients. So I think most people, not everybody, but most people need to supplement just to make sure that you have enough of these things. It's, it's just kind of like an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might have enough uh, B1 and maybe you need some B3, but why not just take a blanket uh, B complex to make sure that you have all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, take a mineral complex to make sure you have all of them. Because Do you, you need don't, a mineral you complex, or can you get enough from um, from sea salt every day in your diet? No, 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 no. Sea salt, you're going to get some of the electrolytes. You're going to get some of the trace minerals. Right. You're definitely not going to get even close to enough magnesium from that's, sea salt. That's true. True. Not, yeah. And you're not going to get enough iron. That's true. You're not going to get enough, enough manganese, and those are the big ones when when it comes to making energy. So you have to have these things. Um, a lot of people are just lucky that they that they tend to have a really good metabolism. They may, may not burn through their, their nutrients as quickly, but I've known a lot of people over the years who have a great metabolism and they live a bad lifestyle and they look great until they finally don't anymore. They finally hit that wall. So where, until they're finally dead? No, until they, till they finally, like, they, they're doing exactly what they've always been doing. Right. And then the next thing you know, they're 30 pounds overweight and they have a big belly. Right. And they're like, I've always done this. I was like, yeah, that's why you look like crap now. You were lucky that you didn't look like crap 15 years ago, right. you were just one of the lucky ones. You were a genetic freak. Whereas some people, you know, they can't stray from a good diet and they can't stop taking their supplements at all because they're on the, they're just so depleted. Okay. It's just, I don't, you know, it's just. It's so just where do you want to go with individual. this, this uh, belly well, cream stuff? You know, when we were in the break, I mentioned, a, uh, oh, the belly cream's good. The belly creams, they talk about how, what, what it, they, they rub this, this cream on your skin wherever you have fat, and it says, well, this will liberate fat. It'll, it'll liberate the fat that's in your, in your adipose tissue or your fat tissue, right? And therefore, it's gone. And that goes right back to the mindset that I said earlier, that people think once you liberate that fat, you just poop it out, right? Mm. It doesn't happen. Hopefully, people are starting to see that you have to liberate it, yes, but then it has to get converted into energy, mm. which is your nutrients. And then another step has to happen. What happens if you convert that fat into energy and then you don't do anything, you don't exercise, or your body doesn't require energy. That ATP that's floating around, that, that pure usable energy, can easily get converted back into triglycerides, mm -hmm. which is fat, right, and mind. then deposited back on your belly. So it's... it's so does, does that then suggest that we have to exercise every day of our lives? No, it, it doesn't suggest that. What it suggests is we have to burn calories or burn energy consistently. So you can do certain types of exercise, and we talk about this burst all the time. Training. This doesn't need to be a burst training show because right. we talk about that a lot. But when you do burst training, I'm not concerned with how many calories you burn during the, the burst training itself yeah, because it's burn. not very much. Right. If you look at the calories that you burn during burst training, it might be 50 or 100 calories more than you would burn sitting on the couch during that same amount of time for 30 minutes. It's not very much. But what it does is it makes you burn more calories all day long and even the following day. Right. So the, for the people who are not aware of this, when we talk about burst training, that's part of my 30-day fat loss program. I took Bob Sturm through a burst training session, and I, um, I uh, videotaped it and showed you what burst training should look like. And one of the studies have shown, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that, and, and correct me if, if I'm wrong on this, 31 minutes of burst training properly, so we'll say just blanket and say burst training, will help your metabolism create an afterburn for up to 42 hours. Right. So there's no reason for you to work out the next day. It doesn't mean you can't or you shouldn't. However, if you're a person who does this intense type of training four days a week and you were to work out and do it again a fifth or a sixth day a week, you're actually going to be counterproductive because now you're stressing the body, you're overworking the body. So the, the thought is, I have to do aerobic training 
and birth training and I have to work out five or six days a week and it's hard for people to transition into um, working out less time, less, fr less frequency and gaining much more results. But with, let, so staying on topic, when we, ex when we create free radical damage through this type of training, we need to replace what we're losing with the proper nutrients to support what we're, the end goal. And that's another thing, yeah, that's, that's not so much related to the fat loss that we're talking about, but it's a great point when you do burst training, when you do any type of exercise, you are creating these damaging byproducts called free radicals. And you have to have, it's antioxidants are basically your, your nutrients that, that counter a free radical. And that's a beautiful thing about burst training is you can do 30 minutes a burst training. When I say 30 minutes, I'm talking about the actual exercise itself. Right. It might, you might only be doing six minutes of burst training right. a day, you know, not counting rest periods. You might do a 45 second burst, a two minute rest, another 45 mm -hmm. second burst. You might repeat that four to nine times. So you're, you're only exercising maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes an entire week. You're not going to create that many free radicals from that amount of exercise. Uh, as opposed to going out and jogging for an hour and 15 minutes five days a week. Your, your, your exercise time and the, the amount of exercise is, is one-fifth or one-sixth or one-tenth mm. of what you should be doing. So you're not creating near as many free radicals that could be damaging you. So you don't have as many antioxidant, as much antioxidant requirements. So you're not depleting all of your nutrients. The same nutrients, by the way, are used to convert fat into energy. Yeah, so people need to recognize that it's real important to recognize that if you don't support what your body's trying to do or what your goal is, then how are you going to get to where you want to go? So, so try not to be fooled by supplements that say, um, take this supplement and you don't need to exercise. It's, it's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, yet there were millions of people who were on board when that supplement was around. Colorado, I believe it was called. It was years ago. Um, the quick fixes are the worst things we can even try to entertain. Right. That makes me think of HCG, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. And, and this whole show is hopefully if you've been following... Um, you Actually, might... we don't have time for HCG. Can okay. we do that yeah, coming up next? Yeah, sure. I don't want to lose anything else in the show that, that has to be brought to the attention of everyone. But a couple of things. Dr. Webster's phone number is 972-735-0707. And he has a video that he's put up on his website, completehealthdallas.com. You can look at the video that discusses more about this topic if you want to revisit it. My videos uh, of this show will be on Facebook also if you want to revisit this. Just look me up on Facebook. You can look under 21 Day Body Makeover, even Train Station Fitness Show. That's another Facebook page I have. It'll be loaded there. Uh, 972-735-0707 is Dr. Webster's phone number. Coming up next, we'll talk about human growth hormone. Does it benefit you? How much does it, ben does it benefit you? And people who, and we I don't know if we'll have enough time no, for HCG, this. HCG, not HCG. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> HCG, totally the, different. The HCG diet. There's, that's where dyslexia comes in, there by the go. way. <laughs> if people don't recognize, my mind starts going different places. So we're not going to talk about human growth hormone. We'll talk about HCG. That goofy HCG diet, how it can ruin you, by the way, and not help you. So We'll talk about that coming up next with Dr. Webster, 745, Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. 752, Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. Dr. Webster in the studio with me. And right now we're talking about HCG. What is it? Give us a synopsis of why the HCG diet is, is dangerous, if you would, because I've already done that. But go ahead and sure, go it's, off on it's that. Sure, it's a hormone that's released in pregnant women. So when they're pregnant, it, it helps them uh, liberate body fat so that the fetus can use that fat for energy and for development. So that's basically what it is. Uh, the, somebody came up with this harebrained idea that if you take HCG for weight loss, it, it'll make you liberate fat. And therefore, as we've learned today, when you liberate fat, it just, you know, it's gone, right? You poop it out. It's gone forever. <laughs> so that's because... That's because, not true if you listen no, it's to not the beginning true. of the you show, by the way. You should have heard the synergy between how the diet and the, and the nutrients, and then hopefully you, you got the, the synergy with exercise, it doesn't work that way. Even if you liberate the body fat, the body fat one has to get into your cells, it has to be then converted into energy, and then that energy has to be burned. So it doesn't matter if you liberate it, just like the cream. The cream will liberate fat off that spot, but it's gonna go right back if you don't convert it to energy and then burn that energy. So that's hopefully people out there um, that were thinking about HCG even before we came back from, this, from the break, Hopefully they start thinking about, huh, that doesn't make much sense anymore. You know, it might have made sense before because I was in the mindset of, 
well, liberate that fat and then poop it out. That's great. It sounds it's gra sounds great, but it's just simply because the, the, the public out there doesn't understand what happens when you burn fat. And you mentioned the video series. It's actually three videos that I have now. CompleteHealthDallas.com. I just launched it last night. I worked till 11 o'clock last night to get it up and going. It's uh, It all works. I, I checked it. I tested it. And it'll take you through step by step what type of diet you need to do, need to eat, 10 action steps to make you a more efficient fat burner, exactly the nutrients you need to take to make you a more efficient fat burner, and exactly the exercise you need to do to make you a more efficient fat burner, and exactly why those three legs really make up the, the, the three-legged stool of the metabolism. You can't neglect one leg, otherwise the entire thing collapses. So talk about the diet portion of HCG. Oh, well, the diet portion is just eat 500 calories and, and take HCG. <laughs> what, what's wrong with not eating many calories? Um, well, you, you end up not training your body to be efficient at burning energy, and then your metabolism will bog down. It, it's but really hold on. As Wait a minute. There's a lot of people who have lost a lot of weight and kept the weight off by doing the HCG diet. How could you say that it's wrong or it's bad? Well, you, you, you tend to not burn body fat. You tend to lose a lot of muscle tissue. And water. You lose water, of course. And you lose some fat, of and, course. I mean, we can't deny that. But, but starve yourself with 500 calories a day. You're going to lose weight. You're going to lose weight initially until your metabolism crashes. Eventually, you will crash. I have patients. 500 calories, by the way, is extremely low. That's about what most people probably eat per meal. I have patients coming to me saying they swear they eat 500 calories a day and they're over 300 pounds. And that is no lie. I, I have them document what they're eating. And they are eating 500 calories a day and they can't lose weight, they're completely obese, it's because their metabolism is bogged down to nothing. That's what I mentioned they at the beginning of yeah. the show. It's they don't have any nutrients. If you do, or not in the beginning, but when you were crapping, it's if you, if you wind up being this yo-yo dieter, then you affect your metabolism in a way, if you do it for a certain amount of years, specific, particularly, then you affect your metabolism in a way where when you are doing everything right, it could take up a, to a year to fix your metabolism. I, I can vouch for that. It is it not is. easy. And it that's takes what a, people it takes really long, want to give up. Yeah, it takes a long time to get your body trained back for one, from one, not not consuming, not, not, a, not insisting on burning sugar. To make your body say, okay, I don't need sugar anymore, I will start burning fat, that can take a little while. Also, to get your nutrient status up. If you are under extreme stress, George, mm -hmm. You burn through your B vitamins so fast and your zinc and a lot of your other, you burn through those so quickly that it takes a long time just to get those going. And sometimes people say, you know what, I've been taking those nutrients and I feel a lot better. My, I have a lot better energy. And then they stop, they run out, they don't re replace right. them. And then within one week, they already say, they're already crashed again. I'm right. saying, look, I'm, even though you're taking a lot of those nutrients, and you're starting to feel better, you don't have any extra stores in your body. You've got to keep taking those. And it's going to take a while before you have enough where you don't have to take a B-complex every single day. That's what we remember how we call that, or maybe you don't, but um, call that symptom amnesia. If you begin a program and you feel a certain way which motivated you to start that program or buy that program, and by the end of the program you don't feel the same way, you're feeling really good, if you don't continue on with the principles of the program, you start to feel bad again and you forgot all of the symptoms of how you felt prior to starting the program. Right. And that's why it's important to journal these things. Right. Take write, it all, write it all your symptoms when you start. Yeah. Look at, back at those symptoms and see how much are gone a yeah. month into it, two months in, three months in, and exactly. so on. And you'll soon realize, wow, that program really does work. Yeah. You know, I've got a great study I want to mention. Uh, we, t we talked about exercise, how you have to do the exercise so that you burn that, that energy. Once you, if you can get fat converted into energy, you have to burn it. How important is exercise? What if you can maintain your weight without exercise? What do you think is better for you? Being at a healthy weight and not exercising at all, or being very active in exercising yet being obese? Being obese. You're right. I know I am. Because I would, we called I it shocked. We, I already knew the answer to that. Years ago they did a study on that about being fat and fit is healthier than not exercising at all. Um, you, we talk about muscle to fat ratio, being active in the first place, gaining certain nutrients that people are not doing. You know, just because you sit in a sauna and sweat doesn't mean you're moving nutrients through the body. It needs to have actual, actual movement in the muscle. Right. So people are unaware of all the benefits of, of, of being active slash exercise. Here's how important it is. Being obese, moderately obese, but yet being active, you will live on average 3.1 years longer than being optimal weight yet inactive. Mm -hmm. 
That's how important the exercise is. Now, you say, what if, what if you can exercise and get to a normal weight? That gives you 7.2 years more. How do they know this? Studies. So how do you study that? You follow activity, you measure, measure BMI, <coughs> you measure life, life expectancy, not life expectancy, but actual life. What about the people who, were, who matched that slightly obese uh, profile and were hit by a bus three years into it and they should have lived seven. No, th those things are all accounted for. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Basic statistics. You take out a non -lead like that. <laughs> all right, it's so that's, bus, are, are we finished? Unless you have something else you want to talk about. I got nothing. Okay. So Dr. Webster, if you want to talk with him, um, 972-735-0707. And do check out that video series, completehealthdallas.com. I think you're going to like it. It's completely free. It's going to tell you the, how to do the proper exercise, diet, and the nutrients you need to take to make you a more efficient fat burner. And then also look at the video, if you wish, um, on Facebook. You can look at Train Station Fitness Show or 21 Day Body Makeover on Facebook. Be a friend, and the video of today's show will be downloaded as well. Um, let's get to the tea box. Hello, George. What's up, boys? Doctor. How are you doing? We are peachy. George, one of these days you're going to have to come out of here, man. How long are you out there? I'm, I'm just swamped today. I can't. No, you're but not. How long are you yeah, out there? It's 1230, right? Uh, Cars we're out here till about 10, and then the orphanage is out here till noon. Oh, yeah? You ever wake up and say, I got nothing today? Yeah. Are you kidding? Why not? It's never Saturday. It's No, it's never Saturday, but it's never Monday. Never Saturday. What do you do on Sunday? I work. I begin to produce the show again. I have my business I'm running. I'm also studying for school. You guys know I'm in Harvard Business School, so it's um, it's it's flipping out busy. Hmm. You need a day off, George. Well, when I finish, I finish business school February 2015. Then what? Then the next challenge. If you stop, you drop, guys. Eh, you need to take a day off, man. You need to you need to re rejuvenate. I do rejuvenate. So one of the things I've been doing since I was seven years old is I've been playing the drums. And New Year's Eve, I had an impromptu call from a doctor friend of mine and his wife saying, hey, we're, there's a party developing at our house, come on over, and I did. And he was playing, I was telling the Dr. Webster this before the show started, and, and uh, it's Dr. David Hensley, just great, great guy, him and uh, his wife, uh, Elena. And so I go over to their house, and I see the doctor in a, you know, he's all dressed up in button-down shirt and pants, and he's got a bass guitar in his hand, and his brother's there with him, and he's got his, you know, lead guitar, and there's drums. But the drummer didn't show up, and we got to talking, and I started playing, and we wound up playing until 12.30 at night, and I had the best time ever. I'm sharing this with you for a reason. So I just went out and bought uh, a, a high-end electric drum set to get back to playing again. I mean, it was just the most amazing time, and, and that is my de-stressor. That's how I have fun. Doing things like that is, is really fun for me. Going to a museum, learning about art. That's not work. That's fun. That's how I get my mind off of work and... And, and everybody has their own way. They go out and drink or they, whatever they do. Just, I have my own way of doing it. All right. I just want to make sure you're, you're not going to, you know, burn out. Yeah, I've Anytime been there. Soon. Well, don't do that. No, I've been there. But um, uh, are, do the cars show up yet for you guys? Oh, they're already oh, they're here. They're all buddy. here. They start here. I got to hear about, well, after 7.